Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be showing you a really novel way to magnetise your miniatures so you can take them easily to your game club and tournaments. This video isn't sponsored, but the team at Warmag kindly sent me out all these different magnets and solutions to share with you. So in the video, I'll be going through everything they've sent out and showing you just how easy it is to apply their system and get your miniatures magnetised in no time. I'll be using these squigs as an example of just how easy it is to get loads of miniatures magnetised and then also my moonstone miniatures that I built from the moonstone starter set. Let's get stuck into it then, we've got lots of cool things to have a look at and it all begins around these boxes and I'm sure you've seen these before, they're the really useful boxes and these come in all different shapes and sizes. They've sent me out two of them, this first one is a 9 litre box. And here's the second box, this is the 4 litre one, so we'll be using this one in the video and I'll just show you how it really is easy to apply all the magnets to your models but also the magnetic sheets to the box itself. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can head over to the Warmag website and have a look at everything that I cover in the video as we go through it. But now we've got our box and you can put the lid on it, clip it in place with these blue clips and these are handles as well. We move on to these sheets and these are the sheets that you're going to stick in and you can see you just peel this film away and that gives you a really strong adhesive underneath. You get loads of different ones you can choose from. I've got a selection here which I'll show you in a second but here you can see just how that film comes off. Really lots of good glue underneath that holds it in place really well as well. So you basically just get the one you like, get your box and then that's going to fit perfectly in there. When you peel off that film you can stick it in place and that's going to be in there for good. That's not going anywhere. That was the Mars Planet version, but you can see there's all sorts of ones here. You've got a kind of industrial look. You've got something a little bit more wild and grass-like, and then you've got this one. So loads of different ones. I'm sure you could match one to any theme that you've got going for your army. Here's a moon theme. So these are going to be perfect for all your different game systems. Age of Sigmar, Warcry, Warhammer, Kill Team. I'll be using this one for my Moonstone miniatures, and it's perfect for the miniatures that are a little bit finer that you don't want to put maybe in a foam tray. And so, yeah, you, you've got so many options. This is just the selection. They do a load more on their website. So you've got another one as well that's a little bit smaller and this sheet is a whiteboard sheet so you can actually draw on this with whiteboard markers. And this is designed to go either inside the lid and that's helpful if you're using the deeper cases because then you can put some models upside down as well. But you can also put it on top of the lid and then you can use it for tournaments when you're moving your models around from table to table. But the first step is to get one of these inside and I've chosen this one. I think it looks really good for Moonstone and it's going to go with the theme. It matches all the cards and things. So I really like that. And then you just line it up, make sure you're getting it nice and straight and then roll it down. That's off a little bit. So you've got a chance to peel it out, but don't let it down too long because that glue is quite strong and it will hold it in place. So there we go. That's down. So I'll give it a good smooth out and I want to try and get rid of all those air bubbles. So you could use like a plastic scraper to push them out, but I've got this bit of hardboard and I'm just going to work that along pushing all the air out and get it as flat as possible and then that will make sure that this sheet really adheres to the plastic box. I'm going to put one of these on the inside of the lid and I'm going to put one on the outside too. It's going to make it a little bit heavy but it's going to work for me because it gives me the option of putting models upside down in the deeper cases and also having something to write on and put my models on on the outside of the lid. So again just line it up and this is designed to fit perfectly for these boxes and I'll just smooth that out, grab that piece of wood again, get the air bubbles out and then make sure that's really stuck down well. Now we've got a box ready, it's time to magnetise the miniatures and this is a real quick and simple process. And once they're magnetised you can use them on the movement trays like this metal one I've got from War Factor. I'll link to that down below as well, I've covered it already on the channel but really good way to get your models done up quickly, especially for a horde army. So you basically take your selection of the different cutouts and you can see they're all different sizes which I'll show you later on and then you peel it off and again this has got a really strong glue on the back and you don't even need to set it inside, you can choose one that's perfect for the base and then the glue is strong enough that it's going to glue it on around the base and they say it's best to leave it overnight so it fully cures and then that's going to be stuck on really well. 
If you wanted to, you could choose a smaller circle and then set it in the base and try and line it up, maybe put some milliput or something inside to level it off. But for me, I like the idea of just popping it on the base like this. It does increase the height a little bit, but you know, not that much, not enough that it's gonna be a problem. And then that's really nice and strong on there. And imagine once you've let it cured for that 24 hours, it's gonna be solid, but it's strong enough already. I took some to my game club tonight after only a couple of hours and they've held up really well. I'll show you that later on, but here's the process. I'll just continue that going around all my models. And then once you've done them all, you can put them on the movement tray and you're good to go. Here's all five squigs now on the tray. And you see, if you pull it to the side, they can come off quite easily. But once they're upside down, they're on their solid. They're not moving at all. So you just slide them off and then you don't have to risk really pulling or tugging at the models. They're not as high powered or as strong as those small silver ones, but because there's so much surface area there, they really hold it in place well. Once you finish with them, you want to get them off the tray. You can just pop them onto your mat and then that mat is going to hold them in place. Again, it's all about that surface area and the magnet strength doing its job that way. You could also put them upside down on the lid if you wanted to. So if you imagine you've got maybe a deeper box with some bigger models, you could even pop some of the smaller ones in there and have them upside down. And then I've got these little rectangular ones, which are going to be perfect for any of the other game systems you play that might use the rectangle bases. I'm going to put some on the side of this one because I can imagine having some models that are quite tall and by using these little magnets on the side I can put those taller models uh, sideways in there. So that's going to work really nicely and it means I don't have to carry around the big tub. I can just use this smaller tub, the four litre one, and then get all sorts of models at lots of different shapes and sizes. And I'll mostly be using this for my moonstone models so let's have a look at how they're going to work next. Right, let's start with this guy, Doug the Flatulent. What an awesome model, I had such fun painting this. And if you're interested in seeing these models and finding more about Moonstone, then check out the video at the end of this one, I'll put a link. But this one's gonna come on a 40 mil base, so we can use one of the bigger round circles now. And it's the same principle, you just find the size you want, peel it off and then try not to touch the glue. It's not going to be enough, it sticks to your hand or anything, but you want to get the maximum adhesive from it. So try not to touch it, pop that in place. And then again, there's enough glue on this to hold it in place all around the rim. And also that slotted piece in the middle of the base is also going to make contact with it. So you've got lots of contact points. The glue's nice and strong, but as they recommend 24 hours, I would definitely follow that guide. But a good press all the way around, that's going to get the adhesive started. And how cool is that? Really quick and easy to do. It's not messy, no super glue or anything required. If you're really not sure about how strong this glue is gonna be, you could certainly add a little bit of super glue around the rim, but you don't need it. I've tried these out now, took them to the game club, they held up really well. And that's before the 24 hour curing period as well. But yeah, definitely follow their instructions though. But you can see, you can put this guy on his side or on the bottom of the box, but you've got lots of different options for when I get some of the bigger models at least. And there you go, put the lid on too, and that's all ready to go. I didn't like how it shone through with the black, so I thought it'd be a good idea to put another one on the top. So I grabbed another one of the smaller ones, that's gonna fit perfectly on there, lined it up, and then I'll stick that in place. And then it's really good, because once that's on there, you can write on it, you can put your models on it, and I don't know if you'd really be using this feature a lot of the time, but it's gonna come in handy for sure. But the main thing is you've got an option by having all your models in there, especially for something like Moonstone, where you take a load of models to a tournament and then for each game, you select a few of them. You can take the ones you wanna play, put those on the lid and keep the rest in the box and move that one tray around during the tournament. So it's gonna be really handy for that. So all up, I'm really impressed with this system. I really like it. You could use the lid as a tray as well. So as well as putting your models on there, you could put things like your dice and any measuring tools and they're gonna go down the side, keep it all in one place. Or you could even magnetize some kind of organized little tray or holder and put that on top too. Here's my game of Moonstone that I played this evening at my local club and I tried out the tray, took them down there, they held up really well in the car, stuck them in the boot, slid them around a lot so I wasn't careful with them at all just to test it out and it's worked really nicely. The models stayed well in place, they were easy to take out and put back in the box at the end of the game and take home. So yeah, I can definitely vouch for this system. It works really well, really quick to get everything magnetized to and it's not messy, you don't need any glue or anything which I think is a really good feature. 
A big thanks to Warmag for sending all this out for me to share with you. Hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you a little idea about how this system works and maybe a different solution to getting your models magnetized. They got all shapes and sizes for different bases from the round ones to the oval ones, the bigger round ones as well. So if you've got some of the larger models, that's certainly gonna work. And you can see there's all sorts going on here. They're gonna have a shape and a size for pretty much everything. And then you can even get all the tubs that you need from them too. And then, so you've got everything in one place. A massive thank you to all my sponsors and supporters this month for helping me keep going with these daily videos. And if you'd like to find out more about Moonstone, I'll link to this video at the end where you can see what's in store for this new series I'm running and also find out how you can paint up some of the models you've seen in this video. Also, thanks to War Factor. I've covered them in a couple of videos in the past. And I'll link to one of those too. And then you can have a look at their movement trays and base adapters, which I think are awesome. Okay, thanks so much for watching then. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, it'd be great if you hit the like button. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.